Welcome back to Football Manager for Beginners. This is a video that's part of a series. If you are new to the game, I would recommend checking out the entire series of videos. You might notice the production quality gets better with each one. That's because the channel keeps doing better and we have like four editors now. I also have figured out the magic of lighting and shaving. But none of that's important. Today we're talking about, well, I mean, it is important. My mom's really happy I'm clean shaven. But today we are talking about transfers and money. This is what I think is the last thing uh, that we're gonna talk about before we really start advancing in this Dynamo Zagreb save that we are playing in for the series. So in the latest installment, we talked about club improvements. We did this while looking at my actual save on Twitch. You can find a link down to that in the description if you wanna just watch me play the game. Uh, if you wanna watch an edited version of that, that's also down in the description on the live channel. But we're coming back to Dynamo Zagreb because we can talk about the finances stuff within uh, the save that we're on again, because it's like more relevant to everything that you're doing. Capiche? In order to see your finances, you'll rather predictably go to the finance tab. Whatever is going on here is gonna dictate the general health of your club. And it's one of those things like your actual personal finances that if you ignore and don't pay attention to, you can miss warning signs and end up living in a box. The FM version of that is of course administration, which is arguably worse. Depending on how much of your life you've decided to invest in Football Manager, which I imagine at this point is still kind of on the fence. Don't worry, it will take over your life eventually. We'll get there. Now at any club, you will go to the top of your finances screen and you will see a financial status. This is a general indication of how healthy your club is financially. It goes from rich to secure to okay to insecure. Bad. And I'm pretty sure there's a range below that, but I avoid it like the plague and you should too. Because the overall balance, while it might look healthy, if you're at a club like Barcelona, you spend a couple hundred million a year. That's not just on buying players, that's on uh, travel, that's on player wages, that's on gigantic staff wages. You know, over a hundred players are on the payroll at Barcelona and some of them have huge wages. So if you see your overall balance at the start of the year at 200 million, you might only be like, okay, in the financial status. So the financial status is your basic indication of how healthy your club is before you get to the point where you can look at the balance and go, well, you know, we're a club of this size and that should totally be good to go. There is a very useful tool for you to get a grasp on where your club is headed financially. If you go to projections, if you, if you make no sales, if you make, you know, no, you, you continue your level of spending, right? This is where your balance is going to be. So you might be wondering, well, we're secure. Like what, what is the problem here? Why are we look like we're losing a lot of money? Yeah, you're secure right now, but in the next couple of years, you would progress to a point where you are okay or maybe even insecure because you didn't sell a player for 15 to 20 million, or you didn't get into the Champions League group stage that year, and boom, you just missed out on an 18 to $20 million payday, depending on money allocation and TV contracts honestly it's like 22 23 million dollars every single year if you don't get into that group stage you're going through the europa league you're making less than 10. and so there are a couple of things that could really affect this but at the current level of spending you've got a couple of years uh, to figure things out and so the projection shouldn't be something that scares you too much as long as you continue to improve and you continue to win if you start losing and you don't sell anybody then things could start to get bad clearly because there is not enough physical infrastructure in place to hold the balance where it is at the current level of club spending. When I'm talking about physical infrastructure space, I am talking about your TV revenue for being in the league that you're in. I am talking about the season tickets and the general match day income that you get. That is the sort of thing where Barcelona ends up making a ton of. Barcelona makes a couple hundred thousand dollars every time they play a home game. They play like 40 to 45 home games a year. I suck at math. That's definitely in the millions though. And that's millions and millions of dollars that Barcelona's bringing in. That TV contracts, sponsorships, those are reliable sources of income that will help your balance stay there over time. If you're wondering how to get those things, make your league better, make your team better, keep getting in the Champions League and eventually build a bigger stadium when you have a bunch of money in your balance, which is something we've talked about in a previous video. And the last thing about your overall balance and just your finances in general, this is not your transfer budget. This is not FIFA, but your transfer budget is over here. Your payroll budget is below it. There is a slider where if you do not have any ongoing deals at the moment, you can change things around. And if they haven't said it recently, which they have, I mean, we just started the season, so we can't slider it around yet, but that is your transfer budget, your payroll budget. Your payroll budget can be set to per week, per month, per year. The American game comes defaulted to per year. I'm sorry if that's offensive. 
that's per annum before you try and figure out what the A stands for. So these are your actual budgets. You also have a third budget, which is your scouting budget, which of course, as we've talked about, you can slide her over to your transfer budget when things aren't locked in right after they've been set. Okay, so that's your finances. The board will give you a transfer budget they believe is right for your goals and being able to compete. So how do you handle actual transfers? Well, there is a transfers screen and you'll see we have some notifications. We have some offers that have come in. We'll hit this little drop down. Uh, in 25 year old striker Bruno Petkovic, West Ham's come in with an offer. We think that we want more money up front. So if we look at these two offers, this one is offering 1.2 million over six monthly, which means we get a payment every six months of 300,000 until we get 1.2 million over two years. My general default is I'm gonna go and negotiate this up to, let's say I want 9 million and then I'm gonna like lean into it and say like, we're almost done with this negotiation. And they've decided to walk away. Okay, so we've got another offer of similar value. Let's remove percentage of profit from next sale, which is where you get a percent of profit when this player is sold again. And let's go up to like 7.5, but let's not lock it and see if we can be interested. Okay, that did not work. But say we look at Bruno Petkovic and we're like, we looked at somebody else in our squad. You know, we did a little comparison uh, with a different striker. Uh, let's say Andrich Komnen and we decided not him, but like somebody on your team, we can replace him, this is fine. Let's go to offer out to clubs. And let's say, you know, we've over, we've priced them both out of those moves. Let's say 6 million, and then let's offer them out. We've got a loan offer as well, which if you click this little button right here, uh, you will be able to see like what the offer is. This is the percent of salary that they are paying. Just for the record, loans are very useful for developing players or for getting big salaries off your books. If you're also Chelsea or any Italian team ever, you can like make a significant reliable wage by keeping players on your team and loaning them out with loan fees. That's only if you're a really good club though. If you're like PSG, you can loan out one of your rotational players for like a million a month or something. And things are cool, but 16 year olds, too young to be loaned out, so we're gonna reject that. Patkovich wants to talk about why he didn't go to Dortmund. Cool. This is part of the transfer experience. So we should have some team leaders here in the dynamics. One of them is Lavakovich, one is one of them is Ademi. Ademi's a fabulous team leader, and Lavakovich is not as much. So let's take Ademi. If we click on him, is he in the same he's in the same social group as Petkovich? So that means he's gonna have a pretty good chance to talk him out of it. If we go to Ademi. Teammate happiness, Bruno Petkovic. Hey, can you talk to him? Ooh, he doesn't want to do that. I'm going to back off. We've angered him a little bit. That is not something that normally happens and is definitely happening because we've been the manager of this team for like an hour and it might happen again on the vice captain as well. No, he's actually down to talk to him. Okay, We're unable to resolve it. So let's go talk to Bruno. He's annoyed. Uh, you can ask couple things, right? I don't want to lose you. What's it going to take to keep you here? Didn't think the finances were right. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to set like a value. And so you can click here and say like, dude, how's 6 million? Like if somebody hits 6 million, we'll sell you. If they don't, we won't. Okay. And then we offer out for 6 million and then we hit continue. By goodness, he's hit continue. And then we've got offers that have come in for Petkovic and a bunch of offers for 6 million. And so we can just click accept these things always handle them through the inbox don't handle them through here unless you see numbers down here and you don't see it in the inbox that's a glitch that can happen then you have to go to the transfer section but if you just reject all these respond to all and accept every offer that's left now he can choose to go to any of those teams we've got the six million dollar deal it's all going to be locked in clearly we went a little low we probably should have tried to push his valuation a little higher but six million dollars is a lot of money uh, and if we look at our finances a hundred percent of our transfer revenue is going to go into our transfer budget until we hit 10 million dollars of revenue and then it'll go down to 60 percent which means on a $6 million deal, all of that will go into our transfer budget. And now we've got a lot more to play with to maybe replace Bruno Petkovic with a less valuable young player that could turn into a better player than him. And you have now discovered the field of economics. That's the essential part of a transfer. Now be careful. Like if you click on a random player, let's say, let, let's find a player that's really, really happy. Somebody who has like no problems at all. Josko Gvardiol, Martin Lievac. Right, and this guy is a fringe player now. Nah. What about Christian Jakic? He's happy here. Let's offer him out. Unspecified offer out to clubs. And we you expect him to probably get mad? We offer all these trials on people. Doesn't surprise me that we did. So I'm just gonna hit space and click. 
you can get through that sort of stuff really quick. And uh, so the offer out, usually if you're gonna get a response to an offer out, it will come in immediately. Because we had trials, those things happen immediately. I wanna give it a few continues. Yeah, so I don't think we're gonna get any offers for them. But we also didn't get mad. If you offer people out and they actually really wanna stay, they will get mad at you for offering them out and you might have to make them a promise to not offer them out for a year. Uh, so you wanna really look at a player and make sure um, that they are not going to do that in the way you can, you know, if they're really happy there, they're playing well and they haven't shown a lot of ambition in their personality, the way they handle contracts and ask for new ones and those sorts of things, then they really might not wanna leave. And the more successful you are, the higher this is, right? The higher your cohesion, the longer the player's been there, the more likely they are to not want to leave. It's a very real thing in real life. You can't just say, we want to capitalize on your value now. Somebody's under contract for three years is going to be like, screw you, dude. I don't want to leave, right? And they don't want to leave. And so they stay. And then you end up with issues. It, it fits into issues like Petkovic asking to leave is down here. Uh, and then you'll have other ones like doesn't want to be transfer list. It's mad at you. You didn't give them a new contract, whatever, all that stuff. It's going to pop up down there. So just be careful. You can't just get honest value for players. And speaking of value, when you do transfers, you look at the value of the player. That's not something that you should use as a huge guide. The value of a player is whatever somebody will pay for them. So don't use this to restrict yourself. Try and push the value as high as you can go. If I offered out Petkovic and hadn't had to promise him that he could leave, and I got six offers at six million, I'm canceling all of them and putting an offer out for 10 million to see if anybody's staying in the boat. You know, we're going from six up to 10. But if on Lovro Meyer, we want to unload this half a million dollar a year contract, we got a couple of people that can take this position. Uh, and somebody comes in with an offer of 1 million, you know, $1 million, and he only has two years left on his contract, and okay. Value is affected by so many things. The quality of the league, uh, the quality and reputation of the player, the length of the contract, right? Their current form is affecting their value, how much they play. It doesn't necessarily dictate what you should get for the player. It is a highly volatile number. Think of the value as like the public perception of a player's value, but you can see the attributes. You're the coach of the team. You have a better understanding of that and their value as a player. Sometimes a smart transfer can be below the value and sometimes it can be much, much higher. And if you only get the value for a player, it's a terrible deal. I've sold players with a value of 3 million for 90 million because we were playing in Belarus. We won the Champions League in Belarus, but the league is so bad that the valuation was really low. So, but we were able to negotiate up to 90 million because the player was actually that good, that kind of reputation, playing in World Cups, world-class player all the way through. So if you're in the Premier League, everybody's got a value of like 30 million, but they're on huge contracts and they're not all great. And there's not a lot of teams that can pay that contract that want not great players. And so you'll end up going under value a lot when you're in the Premier League just to get players off your books. There's one more bit of transfer strategy that I wanna cover. So when you're on your squad list and you look at contracts and you sort by expiration date, you can see the people whose contracts are expiring soon. If you have young players that you're worried about, they're maybe unsettled, or maybe you don't even know that, right? You you don't know to think, you just started playing the game, that this player is probably gonna be unsettled in the future. If you have a talented young player that you feel like is too good for your team, could be too good for your team, or will be too good for your team, you're gonna wanna get them under a really long contract. Because once players start to get within like two years of the end of their contract, and they're not asking for a new one, they might be angling for a way to force their way out of the club, or they might not know it yet. And then PSG shows up like, excuse me, sir, you're wonder kids. And you'll have to fork them over because you can't wait them out. If somebody comes to you and puts in an offer, like Real Madrid comes to me and they throw money at me for a player and he's under contract for less than two years, that player is going to get upset if I reject the bid and I'm just going to have to negotiate Real Madrid as high up as I can go and then sell him or else I'm never going to get true value for that player because I can't be sure that I have enough time to wait for the end of their contract because with six months left in their contract in most countries, they'll be able to start negotiating free transfers, in which case you get no money at all. So if you feel like you get to that six month point before that team loses interest, you're out of luck. But if they're under contract for four years, I can take that and just send them out of there. Because if they're under contract for four years, I'll just say, hey, can we do anything to make you stay? And they'll be like, no. And I'll be like, okay, cool. And I'll just wait. And eventually that team will lose interest. And the player will go, cool, Real Madrid doesn't want to sign me anymore. Never mind. Just don't make a promise and break it. 
find a way through the conversation where you say, hey, we'd love to make you stay. Does money talk? Those sorts of options. And they'll be like, I'm kind of disappointed the way this went, but you didn't promise them anything. The team loses interest. They go, you know what, boss, it's okay. Then you know what you do then? Offer them another contract. But this is some higher level transfer strategy. This is the sort of stuff I talk about in some of the deep dive tutorials I do on the rest of this channel. Would recommend checking those out if that sort of stuff sounds interesting to you. But that's the basic idea of how you want to handle keeping players, selling players, and the idea of interacting with players and transfers, and what your balance sheet looks like and why it's important. Next, and I believe I've promised this multiple times, uh, we are going to play a game at some point. So we are going to play a game in the next video here because you now understand all of the basic mechanics of the game outside of actually playing the matches. So you have a very good command of everything in the back room and anything you don't, pawn it off on your staff, dude. You're good. All right, I'll see you then or on a stream or uh, maybe on the live channel with those episodes. Have a wonderful rest of your day and happy managing.